watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kof, Chof, Lamed, Mel, Yom, Samech, Ayin, Pei, Fei, Tzadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sen, Tov, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series of programs for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's used in the experience of Judaism here in the United States. I'm Mark Golub, as always, it's wonderful to be with you. And because we're in the midst of the Jewish holiday season, the Jewish high holidays, I thought it'd be interesting for you to see some Hebrew words related to the Jewish holidays and see if you can read them, and I want you to make sure you can understand them. So on this session, here is Hebrew related to the Jewish high holidays. I want to begin by putting a word up on the screen that you've seen already if you've been with us for our first series of programs of From the Aleph Bet. Look at this word. How many syllables are in this Hebrew word? And the answer, yes, is one. There's only one vowel. It's the vowel over the resh. Becholem haser, mitsuyan. And... If there's only one vowel, there's only one syllable in this word. This is a one-syllable word. Can you read this one-syllable And if you said Rosh, you are absolutely correct. This word is Rosh. By the way, this word has one interesting wrinkle. Notice that the Aleph in this word, Rosh, has no vowel or shva of its own. Normally, every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva. Every letter at the end of a word has a shva under it, if it does not have a vowel, but the shva is never written since it's understood. So under the shin, there is an understood shva, but the aleph in this word has neither a vowel or a shva. This is an exception. In this word, the aleph is called a vowel letter. And the Aleph is virtually the only letter in the Hebrew alphabet which can be at some times a vowel letter, as it is in this one-syllable word, Rosh. Do you remember what Rosh means? We've taught you before that Rosh refers to a part of the human anatomy. It is the head, Mitsuyan. Rosh means head in Hebrew. Better said, Rosh is used to designate the part of the body called the head. But Rosh actually is from a Hebrew root, Resh Aleph Shin. And the Hebrew root Resh Aleph Shin has something to do with beginnings. Whenever you see the root, Reish Aleph Shin, it has something to do with beginning. So for a human being, we begin with the head, especially if you look from top to bottom of a human being. The top of a human being is the head, and that's where the human being begins. And that is why Rosh is used for the word head in Hebrew. Here is your next Hebrew word. Take a look at this word. We've never shown you this word before, I don't think. How many vowels in this word? Two is correct. The kamats under the shin, the kamats under the nun. Can you read this two vowel and therefore two syllable word? And the idea here is to read a word syllable by syllable. The first syllable is... Sha, Mitsuyan, very easy. And the second syllable, also easy, is Na, Mitsuyan. Put this word together and you get the two syllable word Shana, Mitsuyan, Shana. 
what does the word Shana mean? The word Shana means year. Shana is how you say year in Hebrew. And if we add the syllable Ha in front of the word Shana, you remember that Ha as a prefix is the definite article, the. Ha Shana would be the year, Mitsuyan. Ha Shana, the year. And now let's put these two first words together and you get the phrase Rosh Ha Shana. Mitsuyan. And of course, in English, we tend to say Rosh Hashanah. But actually, in Hebrew, it is Rosh Hashanah. And now you know it means head of the year or the beginning of the year or what we tend to say in English, New Year. Rosh Hashanah, the New Year holiday in the Jewish tradition. And I want to show you something very interesting. Very many Jews, almost all Jews, many non-Jews also are familiar with the phrase Rosh Hashanah as the new year. Actually, Rosh Hashanah is one holiday that is never mentioned in the Torah. The word Rosh Hashanah, the term Rosh Hashanah, cannot be found anywhere in the Torah. And interestingly enough, the Torah has other names for the first of Tishri on the Jewish calendar. We begin with this word, which you know. This word is one vowel, one syllable. Yom, Mitsuyan. Do you remember what Yom means? Yom means, yes, day, a picture of a sunny day. Yom is the word for day. And I want to put a second word up on the screen for you. And notice this word has four vowels. The patach under the hay, the hirik under the zayin, the kamatz under the kaf, and the cholam malay after the resh. And if a word has four vowels, you know it has four syllables. And if you break a word into syllables, you can read any word no matter how long or complicated looking the word is. So let's break this four vowel word into four syllables. How will you pronounce syllable? Ha is correct, Mitsuyan. And the second syllable? Z, Mitsuyan, the sign with a hirik. The third syllable? Ka, Mitsuyan, the cuff with the kamats. And the last syllable? Ron is correct. Let's put the word together. Hazikaron, Mitsuyan, Hazikaron, Mitsuyan. And the word Zikaron comes from the three letter root Zion, Kaf, Resh. And whenever you see these three letters in this order, Zion, Kaf, Resh, the word has something to do with remembering, remembering. Zion Kaf Resh is the Hebrew root for remembering. By the way, there's another very important word that many of you have heard, many of you have heard your whole lifetime, that comes from the Hebrew root Zion Kaf Resh to remember. Take a look at this Hebrew word. How many vowels in this word? Two is correct. The Hirik under the Yud and the Cholom Malay after the cuff. Please remember that the Shva under the Zion is never counted as a vowel. The Shva is never counted as a vowel. And is this under the Zion pronounced or silent? And hopefully you said silent because the Shva is not under the first letter of a word is not under a letter with a dagesh in it, and is not the second of two shvas in a row. And a shva is only pronounced if it is under the first letter of a word, under a letter with a dagesh in it, or the second of two in a row. By the way, that's not exactly correct, 
There are other times also that a shva is pronounced. But for our purposes here on From the Aleph Bet, these are the three rules I'd love you to learn and use to determine whether a shva is pronounced or not. A shva is pronounced if it's under the first letter of a word, under a letter with a dagesh, or the second of two in a row. And for our purposes, any other shva is silent. So as you look at this word, the shva under the Zion is silent. And a silent shva tells you to add the letter above the shva to the letter and vowel preceding it, as if you extend a syllable by one letter, in this case, the Zion. So the first syllable would look like this, and it would be pronounced yiz, mitsuyan, yiz. And the second syllable is easy, kor, mitsuyan. Put the word together, you get yiz kor. And it comes from the root zayin kaf resh, so it has something to do with remembering. And I'll tell you, it's a verb in the future tense. How would you translate this Hebrew word if you now know it's a verb in the future tense based on the root Zion Kaf Resh. And if you said, will remember, you are correct. Yizkor means will remember. And very many of you will know that the Jewish memorial service recited on the holiday of Yom Kippur and some other Jewish holidays is called the Yisker service. And most Jews don't realize that the word Yisker is really the Hebrew word Yizkor will remember. So the service of memorial, especially the service of memorial on Yom Kippur, when we remember all those who we loved and have now lost, that service is called the Yizkor service from the Hebrew root Zion Kaf Resh, remember as a future tense verb. Yiz kor. Now let's go back to the word we were working with a moment ago, hazikaron. And now you know that the root is Zion Kaf Resh, something to do with remembering, and it is a noun with the prefix the in front of it. Hazikaron. What would you imagine? the word hazikaron means. And if you said something like remembrance, making a noun out of the verb root zayin kaf resh, you would be correct. Hazikaron is the remembrance or the memorial. And therefore the phrase yom hazikaron is day of remembrance day of remembrance. And in the Torah, that's what the first of Tishri is called. The holiday of the first of Tishri in the Torah is not Rosh Hashanah, it's Yom Hazikaron, a day of remembrance. And that's how the Jewish people begin the new year, with a day of remembrance. Rosh Hashanah is the new year, but for the Torah and for Jewish values, this is a holiday of remembrance as we look back on the year we have just concluded and remember everything that's gone on, especially our behavior. Where have we failed to do as much as we can to be as lovely and sweet human beings as possible to help those around us, those we love, those in our family, and those in our community, and those in our world? The first of Tishrei is Yom HaZikaron, a day of remembrance. And then the Torah has a second name for the first of Tishri. And to understand that, let me begin by putting this word up on the screen for you. It's a word you probably know very well. How many vowels? Two vowels, the cholam after the shin and the kamatz under the fe. First syllable would be show, and the second syllable would be far. Put the word together and you get shofar. Now there's a word many people know, shofar. What is a shofar? Most of us would say a ram's horn.
like the one that you see on the screen right now. It can also be an antelope's horn. A shofar really is a trumpet. The word shofar really means trumpet, and it's made from the horn. And there are the horns of certain animals which may be used for a shofar, and other animals' horns may not be. The horn of a ram and the horn of an antelope are the two most common shofars. But shofar literally means trumpet, although all of us tend to think it means ram's horn. And we blow the shofar on the holiday of Rosh Hashanah, and there are sounds that the shofar makes. Let me put this word now up on the screen. How many vowels in this word? Two is correct. The shuruk after the resh, and the patach under the ayin. What's under the tuff? And if you said a pronounced shva, you are correct. Of course, the shva is never counted as a vowel, but it is pronounced because it is under the first letter of the word and also under a letter with a dagesh in it. And therefore, we would break this word into two syllables after the shuruk, mitsuyan. And therefore, the entire first syllable would be teru, mitsuyan, teru. And the second syllable, ah, mitsuyan, the silent ayin with the patach followed by the he, which is silent at the end of a word, ah. Put the word together and you get trua or trua, mitsuyan. And what does trua mean? Here are some of the translations you'd see if you looked at a Hebrew dictionary. Sound of alarm. The sound of joy. Or generically, the sound of the trumpet. Trua is the sound made by the trumpet, and therefore trua is the sound made by the shofar. The shofar makes the sound trua, trua. And now look at this two-word phrase. You should now be able to two words and simply read them as two Hebrew words. The phrase is yom trua. Mitsuyan, Yom Trua, Yom you know is day, Trua is the sound made by the trumpet or the shofar, is the second name in the Torah given to the holiday that falls on the first of Tishri. Yom Trua, the day of the sound of the shofar. And here are now the two names found in the Torah for the holiday of Rosh Hashanah. Yom Hazikaron, the day of remembrance as we look back on the year we have just concluded. Or Yom Trua, the day of the sounding of the shofar, the call of alarm, the call of joy, the call of the shofar that reminds us that we are to look back at the year just concluded, to remember our failings and to be inspired by a sense of commandments that we will in the year to come do better to make this world a lovelier, sweeter place for all humanity. So the first of Tishri has three names. Rosh Hashanah, the new year, because the rabbis have established that the first of Tishri is the birthday of the creation of the world and the creation of mankind. Yom Hazikaron is what the Torah calls it, a day of remembrance. And Yom Trua is also what the Torah calls this holiday, as all of the Jewish people gather on the birthday of the world to begin a new year together in joy, in peace, in family, and in commitment to make this new year a better, sweeter, lovelier year for all humanity, a year of peace. And then there is another word that you should know related to the Jewish High Holidays. Let's put this word up on the screen for you. How many vowels? Again, two vowels. The shuruk after 
and the Kamats under the Vet. And once again, there is a pronounced Shva under the first letter of the word, the Taf. It's pronounced because it is under the first letter and because it is under a letter with a Dagesh in it. And therefore, the first syllable is Tishu, Mitsuyan, Tishu. The tough with the shva is like a grace note, tishu, leading into the first syllable, shu. The entire first syllable, therefore, is tishu, mitsuyan. And the second syllable, va, mitsuyan. Put the word together, tishuva, tishuva. And tishuva is the theme of the Jewish high holidays. And the word that is used to translate the English of Tishuva is repentance. The entire idea of the High Holidays is that it's a 10-day period of repentance beginning with Rosh Hashanah. And now let me show you something fascinating about the word Tishuva. And you know, I have constantly said to you that one of the wonderful things about beginning to understand what Hebrew words mean is that we learn more about the Jewish mindset, more about Jewishness, if we understand what the Hebrew is trying to convey. The root of the word tishuva is shin vav vet, and the root shin vav vet always has to do with returning, returning. Shuv is the word to return in Hebrew. And now if we take a look at the word tishuva, we realize that the word tishuva in Hebrew is built on the idea of returning. And when the Jew uses the word tishuva as repentance, the real sense of repentance in the Jewish tradition is to return to one's true self. In the Jewish tradition, there is no idea that if one has a moral failing, if one commits what's called in Hebrew an Aveira or a chet, a sin, that one has somehow broken his or her relationship to God. One is not a failed, sinful human being. One has gone astray, has gone off the path, is not going in the right direction. The word for sin in Hebrew also is chet, as you see on the screen right now, chet. And chet is actually a term of archery. It literally means to miss the mark. When a Jew somehow fails to be what he or she wants to be, when a Jew has failed to do all one can to comfort the mourner, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to care for the lonely, to somehow respect the dignity and the sanctity of every other human being, to somehow be there, for people we love, just to be there, to give ourself our presence, our comfort, our love. If we have failed, it is a form of missing the mark. We have gone off the path. And what teshuva means to the Jew is, what repentance means to the Jew is, returning to the path, to once again, to use the term of archery, trying to hit the moral bullseye. And in the Jewish tradition, no one is ever lost as long as one is willing to go back, again using archery as the imagery, to go back to the line and shoot again. Oftentimes people miss the mark. Often people miss the bullseye. The only real person who's lost is the person who doesn't care who doesn't say, I missed the mark, wait a minute, I want to go back and get that arrow, take it back and shoot again, and come closer to the bullseye. As long as one is constantly trying to be a better human being, one is never lost. And teshuva is simply the Jewish expression for 
trying to return to the path to become once again everything a human being wants to be in terms of being a lovely, kind, compassionate, loving human being. That's the sense of teshuva, the Jewish sense of repentance. Finally, I want to put this word up on the screen. It's a word you should well know from our first series of programs. One vowel, one syllable, the word is tov, mitsuyan. Do you remember what tov means? Yes, as the uh, picture on the screen right now indicates, tov is the way of saying good. Tov. And now, what do you think this two-word phrase means? First, let's try to read it together. The first word is a word you've already learned on this lesson. Shana Mitsuyan. And what does Shana mean? Very good. Year. And the second word now is the adjective good again. To va Mitsuyan. Notice we've added the kamats and the hey at the end of a word. It remains simply as the word for good. So how would you read this two-word phrase? Shana tova mitsuyan. Do you want to guess what shana tova is trying to say in English? And if you said good year, you are correct. A good year, shana tova. And we're going to add one letter to the first word, the lamid in front of the word shana. And the lamid is a prefix which in English is for. For. Can you read now this two-word Hebrew phrase? Remember, the shva under the lamed is pronounced because it's under the first letter of a word. And therefore, the first syllable would be lisha, mitsuyan. And the second syllable, na, mitsuyan. Put the word together. Lisha, na is correct. And now read the entire phrase. Lishana Tova, for a good year. And this is the way Jews express a greeting of love on the holiday of Rosh Hashanah. One says to another, Lishana Tova, may you have a wonderful, sweet, joyous, healthy, good year. Lishana Tova. By the way, you may have heard it in your earlier years as Lishana Tova. Perfectly correct. Just different accent because of Ashkenazic and Sephardic Hebrew. But in Sephardic Hebrew it would be Lishana Tova for a good year. And that's the greeting I hope you extend to anyone you meet on the high holidays of Rosh Hashanah. And of course, the tenth day is Yom Kippur, Lishana Tova. But now when you use that phrase, Lishana Tova, you will truly understand what it means, and you'll understand what the word shofar means, and you'll understand what the word tishuva means, and you'll know that Rosh Hashanah means the head of the year, the beginning of the year, and that it's a rabbinic creation, not from the Torah, and that the Torah calls the new year. Yom Hazikaron, a day of remembrance, or Yom Trua, a day of the calling of the shofar. Put it all together, someone you care about. Lishana Tova, for a happy, joyous, healthy, and good new year. And that's this lesson of From the Aleph Bet. I hope it's helped you get ready for and celebrate the Jewish High Holidays, and giving you a sense of some of the Hebrew that's involved in this holiday. For all of us who help bring you from the Aleph Bet, I'm Mark Golub, wishing every single one of you Lishana Tova, a healthy, happy, sweet, wonderful New Year. Be well, my friends. Behitraot. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, 
You can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of the series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kof, Chof, Lamed, Mel, Yon, Samech, Ayin, Pei, Fet, Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sen, Tov, Now I think I've said enough. <laughs>